and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be about pap smear. Pap smear is a cytological evaluation for transition zone in the cervix to look for pre-malignant changes. It is the primary screening tool for cervical cancer and it is able to detect 90% of the abnormal cells. Pap smear is a painless and non-invasive procedure. And this picture shows how pap smear is done where the cells are removed from the cervix for histopathological examination. The indications for a doctor to do pap smear for the patient, the first indication would be as a method of screening program for cervical cancer for early detection. And pap smear is also indicated for those who are sexually active at the age of 20 to 65 years old. History of sexually transmitted disease or if the patient present with any abnormal per vaginal bleeding or discharge. And pap smear is also one of the follow-up procedure for patients after having the treatment of cervical intraepithelial neoplasia to monitor the progress of the treatment. So when to start going for pap smear? You can start at the age of 20 years old or within three years of the first sexual intercourse. And those who have been pregnant and delivered their baby can go for pap smear and also women on hormonal contraception. The first pap smear should be repeated ideally one year later to guard against false negative results as a double confirmation. After that, if the result is normal, then we can go for pap smear every three years will be adequate. In the age group 35 to 45 years old, it is advisable to go for pap smear every year. And we can stop going for pap smear if you are more than 65 years old. So there are two types of pap smear, which are the conventional type and the liquid based type. The first type is the conventional type, where the smear of the cells will be smeared on the glass slide at the time of sampling and most of the cellular material will remain on the collection device and is discarded after a single conventional smear is prepared. This conventional type requires special care to avoid air drying of cells. Whereas the second type is the liquid-based type, the cell sample is obtained and placed into this collection tube containing liquid preservative and then later sent for laboratory analysis. It is a more sensitive and more accurate type for detection of squamous lesions and also adenocarcinomas of the cervix as most of the collected material is available for lab processing. So there are some advices to give the patient before the procedure of pap smear where they are to come between the 7 to 13 day, usually we say the 10 day after last menstruation. And they cannot have any sexual intercourse for 24 hours before the procedure. No touching or use of vagina suppository for 24 hours before the procedure as well. These are the instruments needed for pap smear, which are the Cascos bivalve self-retaining vagina speculum, the instrument above there, and other instruments are like iris spatula, which is the first picture below, cytobrush, the second picture and the cytobrome third picture and we will also need a glass light for the conventional type of pap smear. This is the brief procedure on how a pap smear is performed. So first we have to obtain consent for the from the patient, wash our hands and wear sterile gloves. The patient is positioned in lithotomy position, clean the vagina with normal saline and then gently insert the speculum into the vagina to assess the cervix. Look for the squamal columnar junction at the cervix and also document the findings on inspection. Then we can use an iris spatula to collect the sample of cells from the outer opening of the cervix by scrapping around 360 degrees. Endocervical brush is then rotated in the central opening of the cervix. And then the cells that are obtained, we can either place on the glass slide and tag to lab, which is the conventional based pap smear, or we can place the cells into the tubes containing liquid preservative, which is the liquid-based pap smear. These are some of the types of report that we might get from the pap smear, the results. So it can be unsatisfactory smear where due to the smear is too thick or there is any air drying artifact 
or contamination or inadequate sampling of the cells. Other types of report include showing benign lesion, for example, inflammatory smear or atrophic changes, or there might be squamous lesion, such as HPV, ascus is the atypical squamous cells of undetermined significance, and LGSIL is the low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, whereas HG will be high-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. So you can see here in the pictures, the first picture shows the normal cells seen, and there is also the ascus, where there are atypical squamous cells, but undetermined significance. And CIN is cervical intraepithelial neoplasia, which I have mentioned in my other video. So there are three grades of CIN, which are 1, 2, and 3. CIN 1 would be considered as low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, whereas 2 and 3 will be considered as high-grade. And all of them are shown in this picture here. So that's all for this video. Thank you.